The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Ben, we need to talk. About what? Your smartphone addiction. I actually Googled it with my smartphone. I'm not addicted to them. Well, I can think of a few times recently where it's become a problem. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> look, Ben, look. The truth is out there. Oh, a new tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Those were isolated incidents. I remember a time when cell phones were about connecting with people, catching up with friends and family, but now it's just removing you from the world and causing a lot of problems, starting fires. We need to do something before someone gets hurt. You know, Allison, you're right. I think in today's episode, we should build a basic bare bones cell phone that only makes calls. Make it as small as possible. It could work as a backup emergency phone. And it'll bring us back to the basics of cell phones from the 1990s. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here are the parts for the DIY cell phone that we're going to make. We need a keyboard or a keypad of some kind to enter the numbers. No fancy touch screens for us. A microcontroller to scan the keypad and also drive a small display so you can see what numbers you've typed. Also to get messages. A cell phone module that can take a SIM card. Uh, you can put in a SIM card from T-Mobile, for instance, and it basically just works. So we're going to use like one of those pay-as-you-go cards. And finally, lithium-ion battery to power the whole thing. I remember the good old days when cell phones would actually last days and days, if not a whole week, between charges. And now they don't. We'll sandwich everything together, make it as small as we can, and then hopefully come up with a nice little compact cell phone with a large battery. So after your Android phone dies, after three hours of use, you can use this one as a backup in a pinch. That is if you actually remember what your friend's phone numbers are. I don't, I don't know any of my friend's phone numbers. My phone does. So that's kind of that's kind of bad, isn't it? I know my phone number though. Let's take a look at the parts in more detail. Here is a keypad matrix that Felix wired up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, star, pound, and then ABC. We can use these buttons for, you know, hang up, call, backspace. We got this little OLED module from Adafruit. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Use the I2C interface, and there's a library that we downloaded that makes it pretty easy to run. Yeah, so uh, it can't fit a lot of text, but I mostly wanted it to be small. If we're gonna make our own cell phone, it has to have a gimmick. My gimmick is that it's gonna be really small. I have this uh, development board hooked up to it. We'll actually wire a new one. We'll probably laser paint a custom PCB with switches on one side, surface mount and the uh, microcontroller on the other, but for now we just have this. I'll use this for programming it. Here's the lithium ion battery. This is actually, this is bigger than the battery in my cell phone, so, you know, considering you're not running a bunch of other crap, this should actually last a pretty decent amount of time. Then this is a Fona cell phone module. Uh, I think Felix got this from Adafruit. And you stick a SIM card in the back. Let me show you. you put your SIM card in the back and then we'll have our own custom headers for it. You basically send this commands using the serial port, AT commands like a modem, like call this number or answer that phone call, etc. And then it just basically works and you also can hook the battery right into it and it has a charging circuit as well. And this port here allows you to hook up a, like a Apple headphones, you know, that has like the, the microphone and the speakers. Uh, we'll probably put our own uh, microphone and speaker out of this though. And we'll probably use a smaller antenna than this. Okay, so those are all the basic parts. The first thing I need to do is program a user interface for the screen. So let's get started with that. I'm walking off camera like Allison likes. I wrote some code to scan the keyboard at all times and get keys from it. It works pretty much like the uh, texting radio that we built a few months ago. 
So the system is going to continually scan the keyboard and then when you push buttons, it'll enter a number up to 10 digits, which is, you know, um, a phone number, at least here in America. So yeah, let's flash the code and take a look. Flash. So it's going through this programmer here into my AVR development board. As far as connections, we have the five rows, three columns, two lines for I squared C to the screen, and then we'll also have a TX RX line going to the phone module. All right, let's plug in the screen. There we go. Okay, so I've used, um, I basically drew these graphics manually. It counts the amount of signal. Right now we just have it at five. So it'll actually draw some signal bars in and it'll draw a battery, which becomes depleted. And messages will be in the upper left corner. So 1-800-888-8888. I don't know what phone number that would be. And then you can also delete it like that. And if you try to send an incomplete number, it'll, it'll tell you so. Yeah, so it basically is a cursor driver. I mean, you know, I, I actually did copy paste. Oh, I don't wanna actually type my phone number there. I actually did uh, copy paste the, um, a lot of the key code from the texting radio because it does basically the same thing. It has like a debounce. Actually, it's just speed up a little bit, you know, so you don't accidentally hit the button more times than you want to. So if you hold the button, it goes doot, 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 but if you tap it, it goes fast. All right. Looking pretty good. The next step will be to put into the code so we can actually make a call on the phone. I have this data sheet over here, which is basically all the commands for that phone module. If you want to make a call, you basically send via serial characters A, T, D, then the phone number, and then a semicolon. So what I'll do is I'll take the string of text that's on the screen. It's actually, it's not numbers, it's actually ASCII characters. But then since you have to send serial data to the phone, you actually send it ASCII characters. So if you want to send a zero, you don't send a zero, you send a 48, which is zero in ASCII. So let's try that part out next. I'm going to attach the AVR board to the cell phone module. Uh, we had this communication device hooked up to it before but it's going to be talking to the module using serial. So we have ground uh, voltage, which is going to be 3.3 volts. Then we have RXTX. So I'm going to plug this in to line it up. See that? When I push this soft switch button, it should turn on the cell phone and the microcontroller. I'm going to give it a few seconds to connect to our network, and then I'll try to make a call. So what it's going to do is I'm going to type in the number, and then when I push the button, the AVR is going to send a serial string to the cell phone module with a command in front of it. And the module will be like, oh, I'm gonna call that number. Here I go. Okay, I'm gonna type in my phone number. Oh, someone's calling me. Hello? Oh, that's right, you don't have a microphone hooked up, do you? It's like I'm talking to a robot. <gasps> they hung up on me, what a jerk. It's pretty easy to make a call, but getting data back from the cell phone module is a little bit more complicated. The kind of data I wanna get is, um, you know, is the phone ringing? Uh, what's the battery level? What's the cell signal strength? Let me show you what kind of responses it gives us. Now it's time for a tech timeout. For today's Tech Time Out, I thought I would show you our attempts at double-sided PCB making using laser paint. On the computer here, I've drawn a jig that will fit into the laser, and I've also built it. Kind of looks like a film production slate a little bit. So the thought here is, instead of taking just a uh, square PCB and sticking it into the corner of the laser, that's a little inaccurate. You take the jig, you stick that into the corner of the laser, zero, zero. Then you tape it down so it doesn't move. And then you put your square PCB. The PCB has to be P uh, cut with the CNC machine so that it's perfectly square when you flip it. And the idea with that is it will stay in the same position when you double side uh, laser it. So in the screen here, take a look, I'll hit render. So first you laser the front of it. And then you laser the back. And if I make this transparent, actually the holes won't line up, but you'll see what it looks like. So yeah, 
The reason it doesn't line up is because this distance here is different from this distance, but it'll still work. So yeah, um, my first test with this method, uh, I didn't etch this yet, but I drilled a hole through the um, pad and it looks like it lined up pretty good. If anything, I drilled the hole a little bit too low. So we're gonna perfect this method, therefore we can have a laser painted PCB double-sided in time for part two of the phone episode. I've hooked up the cell phone module to my computer using this serial adapter. The connections are ground, TX, RX, and voltage reference. On my computer here, I have opened terminal program. I like, I like this one because it shows you everything you might possibly want to know. And then I also have a list of the AT commands which I can use to talk to this module. All right, so let's just see if we get some sort of response. I'm gonna type AT, which basically means nothing. All right, so it says okay. And over here, and this is the important thing, I can see the list of what I'm getting back in uh, decimal, hex, and binary. Well, and then if you look at these commands here, this is um, an echo. It's basically sending back what I typed. So if I type AT, it'll send back AT to me and then it's response. So we see that it says AT, then it has two carriage returns for some reason, a line feed, and then the letters OK, and then another carriage return line feed. When you push enter, like in a text program or whatever, it always puts in a carriage return and line feed. Sometimes it only puts in a line feed or a carriage return, but that's what these 1310 characters mean. Now, the reason all of this is important is because I want to be able to parse the data I get back from the module. And I, obviously I'm a human, I can read this, but microcontrollers are dumb. So for instance, if I want to get the um, battery level there's a different command for that. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's AT plus CBC, I think. Yes, okay. So it gives me back the command I typed, and then it gives me back the data I want. In this case, the one we really want here is this is the percentage. We have 93% of the battery left, and the battery has 3,931 millivolts. And then we get an okay. Now the reason that I have to analyze this is because I have to write a parser that goes past this data, then goes past this data, and just picks out the relevant element, which is the percentage of power left. The other one that we can look at is going to signal quality. Okay, this command tells us the strength of the cell phone signal. And since we're in this building, it's not very good. It's gonna be a basic number from zero to 31. Right now it's 10. Can you hear me now? Again, um, when the cell phone module sends that back to the microcontroller, we have to parse it. So it's like, okay, we see this. All right, so if we see plus CSQ twice, we go over a few character spaces and we take this number and turn it into an actual number, not a string of ASCII. And then we can use that to relay, hey, this is how much cell signal strength we have or how much battery signal we have. The other thing that we might get is a, uh, a ring signal. Let me uh, show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna call this phone. Come on, wake up you piece of crap. Call it. Okay, I'm gonna call the module and uh, watch the screen. Okay, so it's saying that it's ringing. And even that, so it's the word ring, carriage return, line feed. And, oh wait, I can actually, I think I can answer this by typing something. Oh, who cares, I'm just gonna abort it. All right, so the three things that we want to look for from the module are battery level, signal strength, and the ring, you know, string. So now it's time for the real slog, writing a parser to pull that data out of the data stream. That's all the time we have for today. I'm not gonna make you sit and watch as I write the boring parser code, but in the next episode, I'll show you how it works. And Felix will also stuff the double-sided PCB and we'll make an enclosure for the phone. We'll see you then. Cut, 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 what the hell is that? <laughs> what, you working in a barn? Yeah, out of here, toots. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh no, you got that on camera. If you leave me now, take away the super burning Nintendo. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.